And now it's time for a profile. Yeah. Who have we got uh, this week? I'll tell you. It's uh, Paolo Roberto Falcao. Ooh, Ooh the not original the one, Falcao. Not mm. this one, the not, old one. Yeah, the, <laughs> not the remake. The old one with the booth on. With Can we call him Fat Falcao like we call Fat Ronaldo? <laughs> is he a bit porky now, is he? No, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, we've got, we've got old, old, Falcao. old Falcao. Old Falcao. Old Falcao. Yeah. Yeah. It's not in any way disrespectful, and that's why I like it. But <laughs> first Falcao. El phenomenon yeah. of Falcao. Yeah. <laughs> Born on the 16th of October 1953. Oh, 14 years before the summer of love. Just that, under. That summer. Mm. Um, a Brazilian great. Mm. Really is. An underrated Brazilian great outside mm. of Brazil, I think. The trouble is. a celebration. The, yeah, <laughs> the trouble is with Brazil is there's so many greats you lose count, quite frankly. <laughs> um, but one of the best midfielders they've ever produced. Also, one of, if not the best player. Well, no, we can't say the best player, but uh, the second best player in the history of Roma. Tossi, obviously. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, they've not won an awful lot, and he won the league with them, as you'll probably come on to. Well, I, I might come on to that. Yeah. He's one of the two <laughs> bands underneath the teats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. I know, but I was being flippant. Yeah. Um, a very iconic player, too. Now, he was just 11 years old when he went for a trial and he beat Scott in the World Cup 80s. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> and he was voted um, he went for a trial uh, at uh, Internacional in, in Porto Alegre along with about 300 other young hopefuls now in Brazil like many countries the trials are stacked against you uh, if mm. anyone's been to a trial then they'll know that um, but in Brazil this was very much the case and coaches would just <laughs> glance their eyes 300 kids at once something like that Yeah, but coaches would uh, just look at a player for you know, thirty seconds, if if that a minute, and just be like, no, next, 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 next. next. Yeah. So you really had to, to stand out, especially back then. Um, but one of the few, uh, one of the coaches saw um, Falcao and said, "The German has passed with flying colours." Now the reason he was called the German is that anyone in Brazil, certainly back then, um, with fair skin or fair hair, they, were, they would acquire the title the German. He does look a little bit German. Actually. He does, yeah. yeah. He really he, does. I tell you what, he looks like for people who don't know what he looks like. He looks a bit like Art Garfunkel. Yeah, he does. Mm. Yeah. So. If they had a big, <laughs> if you don't know what he looks like, you're probably not going to know what gun for. Yeah. Like. yeah. If he, had, he if looks a bit like Falcao. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Work it out. Hmm. If yeah. they had a real big thing about uh, germs coming over, why did the Nazis cut there? <laughs> <laughs> if they stuck out like a sore I thumb. thought that, but decided not to say it. Yeah. <laughs> the boys from Brazil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine if the two are linked or not, Pete. No. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you saying that Falcao is a Nazi? <laughs> no, I'm not saying. <laughs> that. Anyway, come in. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's listening to this now thinking I've been looking forward to this <laughs> well he's not because it isn't live no it's true. Um, uh, a, f a few years later he started playing professionally for the club and became one of Brazil's midfield greats played in the centre of the pitch wearing the number 5 jersey which wasn't common back then because that's when numbers meant something <laughs> so he was quite a different style of player um, he, you know, he was very good in possession, very comfortable with the ball indeed. He was a deep lying playmaker. Mm. Now, you don't get many of them to the pound in the modern game. But a register. Mm, but yeah. certainly back then, they were quite a real, um, quite a rarity. Well, as they are now, really. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. Pirlo's one, but you can't think of that many others. Modric. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was the fulcrum of um, that international uh, team, and everything went through him. And he'd uh, he'd set up shop just in front of the defenders. He could break forward, would chip in with a few goals, and certainly his fair share of assists. I think it's safe to say. Um, he started playing for the national team in 1976. Was admitted from the 1978 World Cup squad due to a difference of opinion with a coach. Um, many in Brazil were outraged by this because he was seen then as one of Brazil's best midfielders uh, for for many many a year. And at club level, he inspired Internacional to five state championships, which, as we've often said before, um, back in the day were like league titles. Three Brazilian league titles they won. Now, bearing in mind the Brazilian championship had only just been set up in 1971. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is a ridiculously we, we, good stat. We, uh, as we've often mentioned, but to new listeners, if, not, if they don't know, that because of the infrastructure problems in Brazil and the size of the country, there wasn't a proper national league for a very long time, until very late on. 1971? Yeah, a long time after they won their World Cups and stuff. So, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Uh, in 1979, um, uh, Internacional went the whole season unbeaten, which I believe hasn't been matched since. So that was uh, just a sign of how good that team was. And of course, he was the main man for that team. Now, in 1980, Roma in Serie A bought him for £650,000. A fellow dwarfer, Nils Lindholm, um, was in charge of the Rome Giants at the time. Nils Lindholm, the Swede, mm. the uh, mm. Gunnar Gren and... Yeah. Uh, 
And no doubt, one. no doubt. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Which, I, I've read. I've read. That, I mean, I'm not sure if this is absolutely true, but I've read that when he moved to Roma, he was the world's highest paid player. Is that yeah, true? I think it was when he went to Roma. Uh, Roma, yeah, earning an estimated ten thousand pounds a week. Apparently. Yeah, there's uh, mm. according to reports, that's true. Yeah. Which is incredible to think that um, in 1980, yeah, it's a lot of money. Isn't it's it? a hell of a lot, lot of money, money. now. Well, yeah. um, uh, and now he linked up with Bruno Conti and Augustino Di Bartolomé in the midfield, and they were a flipping team. Let me tell you, that was a great midfield. Well, Di Bartolomé is an interesting character because um, without sort of trying to tangent it too much, but he um, he missed a penalty for Roma in in Champions League final. And he actually killed himself ten years. I think it's a ten-year anniversary after that. Is that wow. right? Yeah, it's a really interesting story. Maybe we could talk about it a bit more on another show. But yeah, um, obviously it's about um, it's about. Falcao. Well, during, during Falcao's time in Roma, they consistently challenged the big guns of Juventus, who had Michel Platini amongst them. Mm, there's a real battle between those two as well to be what the standout player in the league. Yeah. yeah. Well, Roma finished runners-up um, in his first season, won the Coppa Italia, and uh, uh, I mean, he was just absolutely loved there I mean he was a fantastic player that Roma side bearing in mind Roma hadn't won the league since 1941 I think mm. and they've only won the league title three times in, in, in their history so um, for them to finish runners up was a big deal as well yeah. and, and he was an enormous uh, part of that team they're a massive club for a club that hasn't won that much yeah, so quite a, yeah. quite a unique position. What was it like three league titles or something? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, um, but he came a real icon there. His trademark celebration, as uh, we saw in the eighty two World Cup, which we'll move on to. Uh, both arms are, are, are aloft mm. and are, out wide. His goal celebration was kind of like the Street Fighter Dragon Punch. Yeah. Mm. It's like he was going to explode every time he scored mm. a goal. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, he had fantastic technique, great stamina, um, reading of the game, and the quick thinking of the man was was absolutely superb. And that curly hair. Yeah, iconic stuff. That's the best bit. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Zico was his Paul Simon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was he was one of the best players in Serie A whilst there, and he's, he's considered by many as one of the best foreign players to ever ever graced Serie A, which is a, a massive tell. Big John, Big John Charles, Big John Charles, yeah, yeah. Liam Brady, yeah, yeah, just to name a couple. On the Roma website, under their um, uh, their kind of Hall of Fame section, if you like, it states that he had all these qualities about you know great technique and blah blah blah, and it said which were only bettered by Totti, <laughs> which I think which I think basically is saying he's the second best player in the history it's of the club. A bit of a dig. Totti, yeah. Yeah. Did Totti get the passwords for the FTP? <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, popped in the office. Can I just make a few changes on the, uh, on the website? Yeah. <laughs> now it was while he was at Roma that Tele Santana became head coach of Brazil and picked Falcao for the World Cup in '82. Um, we've spoken about this World <coughs> Cup a number of times before um, uh, Falcao um, played a, a, a very very vital role in that fantastic Brazil side he was reportedly the first name on the team sheet which isn't bad considering Zico and Socrates were in that midfield mm. as well and given that I would probably go from the top to the bottom to the keeper Ooh. first so mm. it says a lot about his quality you've got to build a team somewhere it's true um, it's well documented that the Brazil side of 82 were one of the best sides never to have won, won the World Cup <laughs> Falcao scored the fourth goal against Scotland the game was in about five minutes left they were already three one up, and he celebrated it like it was the World Cup winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, he celebrated that goal against Italy like it was, yeah. because um, that goal was to, to level it up in that in yeah. that famous match where Italy won three two. Rossi hat trick. Mm. Mm. Rossi hat trick, and, and that edged Brazil out. They, Brazil just needed a draw. They were two one down. He scored a superb goal. That was criminal defending, wasn't it? I mean, no one closed him down. He almost got he found himself in the inside the uh, in yard box. A rasping drive. Gra- a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately for him and Brazil, Rossi made it three two. So um, they went out and he was absolutely gutted by this and he said uh, when looking back years later he said when the match was over Bruno Conti came up to me and gave me a hug and though we'd agreed to do it, to do it beforehand he couldn't even bring himself to swap shirts he felt so sorry for me that it looked like he was on the losing side oh, right. so I took my shirt off and, and stuck it in his hand and, and walked out the stadium um, with the Italy shirt presumably walked via, the, via the changing room yeah, he walked out um, <laughs> but I mean yeah. in this car park he's still got boots on <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, he returned to Roma after that and because uh, that's where he worked <laughs> and uh, and helped them win their first Scudetto for 41 years um, and and he won player of the year as well that year ahead of Michel Platini so they beat Juventus mm. and, he, and he personally beat um, Platini and he got the uh, the title the 8th King of Rome ah nice presumably yeah. there's been 7 before oh, that, yeah. otherwise it wouldn't make any sense <laughs> um, they won the Coppa Italia as well didn't they they, they did they, they, um, well they, that was the, no the year after oh was it okay the, the year they won the Scudetto they won it with 43 points from 30 games Two yeah. points for a win. Yeah. Old school. I remember yeah. The day. There's no getting away. Yeah. Stayed up easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. A point was a perfectly acceptable result back yeah, then. Yeah. Um, the following season, Roma reached the European Cup final in their own stadium against Liverpool and they lost on penalties. And Di Bartolome, as we mentioned, That's missed right. the vital penalty and 10 years to the day on, shot himself in the mm. head. 
terrible story. Um, you keep bringing it up though, don't you? That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Oh, I only want to talk about the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the state of Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They did win um, the Coppa Italia that year, but the treble was on. They, they they just lost out on the league, the European Cup. I mean, for Roma, the thought of winning a treble like that, obviously yeah. once in a lifetime mm-hmm. kind of stuff, and it just slipped through their fingers. Well, they didn't win the uh, Scudetto again until 2001, did they? I think that's right, yeah. Mm. And a big fabs, is that right? Big fabs, yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> Big, big fan. <laughs> better than Big Wang. Big, big Wang, Wang. come on. <laughs> but not as good as Big Pimpin. No, <laughs> no. never is. Uh, his final season was, was blighted with injury and off-field antics became a problem. A Brazilian <laughs> playing in Europe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, and well, it, I say in Europe they do that in Brazil, but it's just not a problem in Brazil. It's, just standard. <laughs> On that, it's weird if you're not doing it. Brazil squad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, yeah. loving that. Yeah. Um, he only played a handful of games and, and scored just the one goal in his, in his final season. He fell out with the coach, and his time at Roma finished in, in 1985 after a fantastic spell with them, which saw the club reach highs that they'd never seen before or since. Um, you could argue, but uh, back to Brazil he went and signed for São Paulo and uh, played out the remainder of his career there. He played uh, with Brazil as well uh, until they were eliminated from the 1986 World Cup where he featured just a little bit. Uh, After uh, playing, he soon became a manager and he was managing the national team after Italia 90 but didn't really impress in the role. Stints with Club America, uh, Internacional, um, Japan and Bahia all showed management wasn't his forte. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm more troubled to bring you news that these days he does look a bit like a Brazilian Andy Gray. It's a shame. Mm. It's a shame. I can't tell the people the truth though. <laughs> you can't you can't cut on all these listeners. No, I'm gonna. No, he doesn't. Okay, fine. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> he looks a bit like Andy Gray. Have Ross another go. The the <laughs> record label boss in Wayne's World with the cigar. <laughs> I can't think. Look it up. Okay. But there's no grey in that for me. Okay, fine. Um, Actually, I I, I, know, I don't know what he looks like, um, but I disagree with that as well. Okay. <laughs> small, Marcus and I okay, win two one. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Again, uh, another yeah. good victory yeah. over a two legged affair. Um, uh, <laughs> he uh, he he left. If we just go back to his Roma. Um, career to finish he left Roma at a similar time to Leedholm and Falcao was forever grateful uh, for the big Swede to, um, to, for him bringing him to Rome or Roma and uh, he sent the Swede his number 5 jersey with a note saying boss I'm returning the shirt that you gave me when I arrived here I can't do it in person because I know we'd get emotional I'd like you to keep it as a reminder of our friendship oh. and he, he never spoke to, to Leedholm about this but he, he bumped into um, Leedholm's son a few years later at Italia 90 and asked him if, he'd fa- if his father had received the shirt and he said nobody was allowed to touch it he treasured it like it was a precious stone oh. <laughs> that's not really like yeah. but a very important player in Brazil's history uh, but also the history of the game damn it all there's not too many like him have graced yeah. the world's playing services over the years oh he could do it all he, he could break play up he could pass the ball nicely mm. break forward yeah great player wonderful and he's in to the team when that's all of fame <laughs> Falcao. Falcao not as good as Totti Hibonic, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah who's already in